Why America's enemies fear the EA-18 Graham Growler more than any fighter jet. Among America's most specialized aircraft, few remain as misunderstood and underappreciated as the EA-18 Graham Growler. While most attention in modern air combat falls on stealth fighters and long-range bombers, the Growler operates in the shadows, crippling enemy defenses before the first missile is even fired. Developed as a replacement for the aging EA-6B Prowler, the Growler isn't just an electronic warfare aircraft, it is the front line of America's invisible war, a war waged in the electromagnetic spectrum. Its development began in the early 2000s at a time when America's dominance in the air was shifting from brute force to digital superiority. The Growler was designed not to drop bombs or dogfight, but to blind, confuse, and silence. Derived from the combat-proven F-A-18 Farad Super Hornet, the EA-18 Gram retained the speed, maneuverability, and reliability of its predecessor, but added jamming pods, radar disruption systems, and communication interference gear that turned it into a flying electromagnetic hammer. According to retired Rear Admiral Mike Manazir, who oversaw naval air warfare programs in the early 2010 second, the Growler doesn't just support the strike package, it enables it. Without it, fifth-gen platforms are flying blind into contested airspace. His words underscore a fundamental truth. American air superiority is no longer only about stealth or firepower. It's about control of the spectrum. Unlike stealth bombers that avoid detection, the Growler makes its presence known. It announces itself not through sound or speed, but by corrupting radar screens, jamming missile guidance systems, and confusing command networks. Where other aircraft seek to disappear, the Growler dares the enemy to find it and then makes sure they can't The EA-18 Gram officially entered service in 2009, but its roots reach back to the Vietnam War, where the need to suppress enemy air defenses, said, first became vital. Aircraft like the EF-105 Wild Weasel pioneered this mission, but it wasn't until the EA-6B Prowler appeared in the early 1972nd that America had a dedicated electronic warfare platform. Even then, the limitations of analog systems and slow airframes meant the Prowler was often playing catch-up. By the time the Growler was conceived, the pace of electronic warfare had become digital and instantaneous. Threats like the Russian S-300 and S-400 surface-to-air missile systems with their phased array radars and high-speed tracking demanded a new kind of aircraft, one that could adapt its signals in real time, move fast, and survive in the densest electronic environments. That aircraft was the EA-18 Gram, outfitted with ALQ-218 receivers and ALQ-99 jamming pods. The Growler can detect, analyze, and suppress enemy emitters across a wide frequency range. In many missions, it flies alongside stealth fighters like the F-22 or B-2, ensuring their approach is masked not by design alone, but by active deception. Growlers don't just jam radars, they manipulate them, sending false signals and decoys that make it impossible for adversaries to distinguish between real and ghost threats. In 2011, during Operation Odyssey Dawn over Libya, EA-18Gs played a critical but quiet role. While headlines focused on Tomahawk cruise missile strikes and fighter sorties, growlers were in the air disabling Libyan air defenses, protecting coalition aircraft from threats that were never even seen. One defense analyst described their impact as surgical chaos, precise, devastating, and entirely invisible. Their performance in Libya was a preview of what was to come. During later missions over Iraq and Syria, Growlers supported both manned and unmanned aircraft, ensuring safe passage through hostile territory. In some instances, they were called upon not just to jam enemy radars, but to isolate insurgent communications, target command nodes, and suppress short-range anti-air systems. These tasks, while rarely publicized, are often the key to mission success. What few realize 
is that growlers have become indispensable to both Navy and Air Force operations. Though a Navy asset, they often integrate with joint strike packages and are forward deployed to key locations like Guam, Japan, and Europe. Their presence is a deterrent, particularly to countries like China and Russia, which rely heavily on integrated air defense systems to defend their perimeters. In recent years, adversary militaries have ramped up efforts to counter electronic warfare with frequency-hopping radars, passive detection systems, and even anti-radiation missiles. But the Growler's open architecture and software-driven systems allow for rapid updates. Unlike older platforms that took years to upgrade, the EA-18 Grams digital backbone enables it to evolve constantly, sometimes between missions. Naval analyst Brian Clark of the Hudson Institute noted, what makes the Growler deadly isn't its equipment, it's the speed at which it can adapt to threats. In electronic warfare, timing is everything. And the Growler is built for speed, not just in the air, but in code. A typical Growler crew consists of a pilot and an electronic warfare officer, EWO. While the pilot handles navigation and aircraft control, the EWO manages the symphony of jamming, deception, and surveillance. These crews train relentlessly, not just in flight, but in electronic theory, threat databases, and real-time spectrum management. Their work is half science, half improvisation. One former Growler EWO described his job as hacking with afterburners. It's a phrase that captures the spirit of the aircraft fast, clever, and aggressive. This is not passive defense. It's offensive electronic warfare, blinding enemy eyes before they can fire, disrupting missiles mid-flight, and cracking open electronic armor to expose critical weaknesses. Though the Growler remains unmatched today, its future is tied to broader developments in joint all-domain operations. The next phase of warfare will demand tighter integration between air, land, sea, space, and cyber forces. In this environment, the EA-18 Gram will serve not just as a jammer, but as a node relaying data, protecting networks, and enabling strikes far beyond visual range. There is also growing speculation that the Growler could evolve to carry directed energy weapons or offensive cyber payloads. While details remain classified, Pentagon officials have hinted that the Growler's modular systems and power capacity make it an ideal testbed for next-generation technologies. Yet for all its high-tech capability, the EA-18 Gram is ultimately a product of human expertise. Its success depends on the skill, judgment, and coordination of its crews and support teams. Every mission is a chess match against enemy radar operators, missile crews, and electronic specialists. In this invisible battle, seconds matter. Mistakes are measured not in inches, but in bandwidth. In the skies over contested territory, where silence is survival and confusion is power, the growler doesn't roar at whispers, but its whisper can silence empires. As America's enemies continue to build walls of radar and missiles, the Growler remains the key that slips through, turns off the lights, and opens the door for others to strike. The EA-18 Gram Growler may never make the front pages. It doesn't drop bombs, dogfight in air shows, or star in recruitment commercials. But for those who understand air power, it is perhaps the most important aircraft in America's arsenal. Its presence shapes battles long before the first shot is fired and often ensures that some shots never need to be. It is, in every sense, the warplane for wars we can't see. And that makes it all the more essential in a world where dominance is measured not just in firepower, but in control of the unseen.